Lakers Grizzlies is gonna be so movie. It, it's gonna be a movie until you realize last year Jared Vanderbilt's Malik Beasley and D'Angelo Russell were all exposed by the Grizzlies. And hey, maybe those players just aren't that good in the playoffs. Yeah. For as good as they are in the regular season. I'm a big deal regular season guy, right? But for this Lakers team, do they have the better duo in LeBron AD? Oh yeah, for sure. I would say Anthony Davis is a clear level above Jaron Jackson. I mean, defensively, he was switching on to guards in the last playing game. He's a wrecking ball. But the Grizzlies do have a more proven coach in Taylor Jenkins. And a more proven supporting cast of guys like Tyus Jones, Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks is going to be guarding LeBron. He's probably one of the three best wing defenders and one of the best matchups for James because he is nonstop. And then you look down the roster, no Steven Adams. That is going to hurt. No Brandon Clark. Nope. But you do have Luke Kennard, who's going to allow you to have a shooter on the floor at all times. You pair that up with Xavier Tillman, who's a pretty good backup big, like one of the best backup centers in the league. And I think this Memphis team just has too much continuity and too much flow. John Morant is going to make Anthony Davis work in the series. Last year, he was averaging 40-some-odd points versus the Warriors, 38. And I just don't think we give John Morant enough appreciation in the playoffs. I had the Grizzlies going to seven games versus the Lakers. Right? Here's the thing, John. Here's the thing. I had the Grizzlies winning in seven games. Here's the thing. Normally, this is normally I love Bron. Again, Bron, Bron and D-Witt are the reason why I fell in love with basketball. So uh, certain times I'm always going to take what I've seen from him all the damn time. And maybe it's just not sinking in the fact that he's 38, but it's just the fact that uh, two years, it's just been two years since we last saw him the postseason that we see him turn it up all the damn time. We've seen him turn it up as the season's gone on. And then it's just injuries and then him working his way back. That's probably hampered his game. The whole problem with what it is right now is that Stephen Adams has been out since January 23rd. Since Jaron Jackson has been back, and before January 23rd, he was averaging 3.1 fouls per game, the lowest mark of his entire career. Since Steven Adams has been out, he's been averaging four fouls per game. Now you put that in a Lakers series against a team that's... People is trying to make the free throw margin some big some big issue. Like, the past couple years, Houston didn't have, like, a 10 free throw margin on the entire league all the damn time. But when you put that in a series with guys like AD and Braun... Not even Braun. Braun has a horrible whistle. Well, you can put that in a series with guys like Austin Reeves, guys like AD that draws fouls as much as they have. He's going to be constantly in foul trouble. If he's able to stay out of foul trouble, that gives Memphis a lot bigger of an advantage. But also, now you don't have your best rebounder against a team in the Lakers with AD looking like he's ready to grab every damn thing. So, the way I look at it right now is the big right now, if Darvin Ham can figure out that A, don't have Jared Vanderbilt just sitting at the, just sitting in the corner, just being a non-factor. Put him in action. Run some Spain pick and roll. Make him the screener for the screener. Run some, um, actually put him in the dunker spot. Like make him well, cut back do, door. Do all those, all those. If you can put Jared Vanderbilt in action, that makes him an actual offensive, an actual offensive weapon or act, offensive player they have to worry about on the court. This series is going to be over in five or six. No, uh, Jared. Jared's a good passer. I would get him that's, going. That's the thing. But I'm saying in, the whole problem. Games. The whole problem is since Darvin Ham uses Jared, um, uses Jared to so horribly sometimes. Is that now you put Jer- you now you put Jared on him? Jared is now a roamer, and he's that's just, a problem. Wide open. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. But now if you if you find a but if you find a way to not make him a roamer, or if you if Rui comes in at least give you some some defensive. Some mm-hmm. defensive upside that wrecks a lot of men that wrecks a lot of what Memphis can do. Cause at that point, because at that point, you have Jared Vanderbilt on probably Ja. You um you um you need a good point of attack defender on Ja. You're gonna have um you're gonna have um who's there too? You're gonna have D Lo probably. You either Reeves. have D Lo or Austin Reeves, Reeves probably. I think Reeves is gonna guard Ja probably. I actually think Dennis Schroeder would. I think Dennis Schroeder is start? not starting, though. No, he's going to finish, though, because D'Lo is going to get benched. Um, oh. So, this is like the playing game, I think you have, like I said. And then you have, have Bro- then you have, um, what's his name? Then you have um, D'Lo guard um, Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks is literally, oh, shit. Dylan Brooks is not an offensive option sometimes because he will literally shoot you out of yeah. games. Oh, no, he's an option. And then Just you have Brom. Yeah, then you have AD on Jan Jackson Jr. Yeah, Braun either on your center as the help side or a little bit as the roamer on the offensive end. 
And I think when you have those lineups and the Lakers are just really deep. And right now, Tyus Jones is dealing with some injuries right now, too. So you don't even know how, how productive I he is. Yeah, he is. So right now, when you don't even have your backup big, that's that good on the glass. I guess the Lakers team, if it was a fully healthy Grizzlies team, I'd probably take Grizzlies in six. But right now, if the, if Darvin Ham at least becomes a competent coach, because he's with these rotations and how he uses Vanderbilt, I think this series is probably over very quickly. I think you just put Jaron Jackson in too much of a horrible position for what he's already shown you about how bad he is at keeping his hands to his damn self. Um, And, right, you just don't really have a defender for Braun. I don't care who... I don't care if you think Dylan Brooks has been that great. He's, he's <laughs> you're not stop you're not stopping Braun from put, probably putting up a good twenty seven on fifty uh-huh. on fifty percent shooting this series if he wanted to. Well, and it just really all depends on the production you get from probably D'Lo as a shooter, and what you get from Malik Beasley coming off the bench. Yeah. So for me, listen, you guys have hit on almost all the points. Uh, there's one you guys haven't hit on, but I'll get to that in a second. I got the Lakers um, in six. I could easily see it going seven. The only reason I say six is because you're missing Brandon Clark and Steven Adams. Mm. Uh, and that's major. Uh, again, you guys have hit on a lot of the points. I think AD is going to be attacking Jaron Jackson Jr. LeBron's going to be attacking Jaron Jackson Jr. early and often. Get him in foul trouble. Get him off the court. And once he's off the court. The series is over. I mean, it's a freaking open highway to the rim for AD and LeBron. So, and LeBron is still... I mean, he's it's always just depends on how quick he gets those first so. two fouls. Yeah, if Jaron Jackson's foul riddled, the series is over in five. Well, he's, he, I, I mean, he's going to be in foul trouble. I think we all, I think that is the game plan for Darvin. If Hamper. he isn't, he's, if he, he if he doesn't get in foul trouble, we have to look at him as a player on a completely different level. If he doesn't get, because that literally his biggest issue just gets just got negated, which is insane. Yeah, I, I, but I, I just don't. I think uh, eventually a player shows you who he is, and I think he showed you enough. Is is what he is. So. <clears throat> And and the biggest point for me, because you guys have hit on a lot of the points, so I'll just go on this one. This uh, And Dylan Brooks brought it up. This is a legacy series for LeBron in terms of this. Is it going to negatively oh, come impact on. Don't, his don't legacy? Don't feed into that. Is it going to negatively impact his legacy harshly? Like, no, it's not. But it is going to be a tad bit of a stain because there are a lot of people, me included, who think the Lakers can make a deep run. There are a lot of people who think the Lakers have a good shot of winning the finals this year, okay? Because they are getting healthy at the right time. They're firing on all cylinders, and it is – I mean, it, in the NFL, John, I, I gave you this quote. I forget who said it. It might have been Parcells. You want to run into the playoffs. You want to go into the playoffs hot. Lakers are doing that. They had a little str- – yeah, but for the most part last month, they've been doing very, very well, especially Anthony Davis. They can win ugly. And – for me, it's just, listen, if that's the case, if you think this team can go that far, there's no excuses for this series. There's none. Honestly, the excuses are on Memphis' side because they're missing Adams and Clark. Mm-hmm. So for you, if you lose this series, what's the excuse? What's the excuse, LeBron? Anthony Davis got hurt. No, if if everything stays healthy, what's the excuse? There is none. So, yes, it is a somewhat of a legacy series for LeBron's case. The last couple se- seasons, he has not been able to defend his throne. You're able to do it now. No excuses. You got to get the job done. You, you got the postseason. You got the you, the team is built to the way that complements his game with shooters, yep. with another ball handler, so he doesn't have to be. He has no excuses to be to have lapses on the defensive end anymore because you're not handling the ball constantly. Um, what I love about this team specifically is that none of them is afraid to call him out. On the, you, you saw last game when he wasn't when he left Torian Prince open. You saw like during his shoulder, like what the fuck are you doing? Get up there! And Brown's like, my bad. And he played well defensively after that for the rest of the game. You have guys on the team that's willing to tell him and keep him accountable. You have, I just don't, I just don't think Memphis has enough anymore without Stephen Adams, Brandon Clark, with how foul riddled um J- Jan Jack to actually like win this series Mm -hmm. i wouldn't be if right now if they take this to six or seven games that's just saying that memphis is a little more legit than we everybody else thought especially if they're fully healthy but this should very much be over in five to six games whoa Whoa. you're sleeping on my man xavier tillman xavier tillman is one of the best backups in the game though 
And I do agree if Jared gets in foul trouble, Xavier and Santi Aldama are just not going to be enough at the okay, rim. But how good is the Xavier, best backup in the NBA when he's guarding Anthony freaking Davis all game? Xavier's played well offensively, and his issue is always finishing. If he's finishing plays, right, and okay. Jaren's not fouling out every game, I do think they have more than enough at the rim to just limit drives and hold the bronze. You're, you're picking seven. Memphis, right, in seven? You took oh, Memphis. hell yeah, I'm picking Memphis. Okay. I think they have more than enough to hold the bronze like 46%, 47% shooting because LeBron this year hasn't been able to make a three. And if he's not making threes at this age, hey, Dylan hey, Brooks, hey, second who's half the season, defense, shot 35%. Oh, oh, that's average. And if he's not making threes okay. with Dylan Brooks guarding him on the ball, who's going to be constantly fighting, pushing him, annoying him, like Skip Bayless, but imagine if he's six foot seven and really want to win an NBA championship, I think Memphis is going to give LeBron a hard time on the ball. They're going to throw Wait, a lot of bodies. Dylan a lot Brooks of also foul riddled? Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. Is it, is but it, in the playoffs, they're attacked too, right? If he gets playoffs, another attack, does he get suspended? Yeah, he's pretty close. In the playoffs, Let's go. Oh, oh, yeah, this, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Fouls get called less in the playoffs. And they do, like, but if Hanks he... on if Dylan he... Brooks, they give those out like candy to him. Yes, but in the regular season, they weren't calling a whole lot of fouls on him. The question is, okay, how badly does the NBA... three and a half! How, the question is, how badly does the NBA want the Lakers to win this series? A lot! If they want, if they want them to really win, and they really don't want to see John Morant move on... I'm not going to lie, if I'm Lakers Adam Silver... are probably going to win this thing. If I'm Adam if Silver, lot, I'm rigging the hell out of this to be either Boston um, Boston Lakers or Milwaukee Lakers. I'm rigging a lot, the like shit out of this. Because we saw 20 years ago, if you put Jaron Jackson in foul trouble, I mean, the gates are opened up and it's over. So if the NBA really wants them to win this series, they're going to win. It's just a matter of how badly do they I want them to? If you get on the if X and O's, it depends on how you, when Jaron Jackson gets those first two fouls. If he gets those within the first, Five let's minutes. say, no, if he gets those in the first seven minutes of the game, it's over. Because once he's out of the game, and you get Bron and AD a chance to get it going. Because once they once Bron and AD get it going, they get a feel for either the jump shot or get a feel for the game. At that point, there's no stopping them. It doesn't matter how good of a you defender you are at that point. Superstars, when they get going, there's a reason why they're superstars. There's no defense that's going to stop them one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So he needs to stay out of foul trouble so he can constantly at least be a pest to keep them out of rhythm. The moment they get in rhythm is the problem. 